accept the remarks on behalf of His Excellency Xi Jinping, President of the People's Republic of China, at the closing ceremony of the BRICS Business Forum 2023. Your Excellency President of Guatemala, Cyril Ramaphosa, members of the business community, ladies and gentlemen, friends, I wish to extend my warm congratulations on the success of the BRICS Business Forum in South Africa. Ten years ago here in South Africa, we BRICS leaders witnessed the birth of the BRICS Business Council. Since then, the Council has stayed true to its founding mission. It has seized opportunities to deepen cooperation, contributing to economic and social development of BRICS countries, and helping sustain global economic growth. Now, if y'all want to see a dog and pony show, here the fuck it is. Here it is. And you want to know why I say that? Just keep listening. Just just pay attention. Because uh, no one's paying attention to what's going on. Like, have you heard recently that the people in Hawaii have been telling America, we're not Americans? Pay attention. Right now, changes in the world, in our times, and in history are unfolding in ways like never before, bringing human society to a critical juncture. Should we pursue cooperation and integration or just succumb to division and confrontation? Should we work together to maintain peace and stability or just sleepwalk into the abyss of a new Cold War? Should we embrace prosperity, openness, and inclusiveness, or allow hegemonic and bullying acts to throw us into depression? Should we deepen mutual trust through exchanges and mutual learning, or allow hubris and prejudice to blind conscience? The course of history will be shaped by the choices we make. An ancient Chinese thinker observed that following the underlying trend will lead one to success, while going against it can only cause one to fail. We humankind have achieved notable economic development and social progress over the past decades, and that is because we have drawn lessons from the two world wars and the Cold War, followed the historical trend of economic globalization, and embarked on the right path of openness and development for win-win cooperation. Our world today has become a community. Y'all notice how like different it is in English compared to Chinese? You know, like listening to someone in their language and then hearing it in English is such a completely different um, thing. Because it sounds like he is straight like, and he's just like, well, we're here today. Da, 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 da. Like a lot more passion in their natural language than English, you know? It's just I, I just want to point that out because I'm American and I'm really fucking dumb. With a shared future in which we all share a huge stake of survival. What people in various countries long for is definitely not a new Cold War or a small exclusive bloc. What they want is an open, inclusive, clean, and beautiful world that enjoys enduring peace, universal security, and common prosperity. Such is the logic of historical advance and the trend of our times. Ten years ago, I made a proposition of building a community with a shared future for mankind, calling on all countries to build this planet we all call home into a harmonious family. In the face of high winds, choppy waters, and even treacherous storms, we in all countries need to uphold the correct views of the world, of history, and of our overall interests, and act to translate the vision of a community with a shared future for mankind into reality. We need to promote development and prosperity for all. Many Many emerging markets and developing countries have come to what they are today after shaking off the yoke of colonialism. With perseverance, hard work, and huge sacrifices, we succeeded in gaining independence and have been exploring a development path suited to our national conditions. Did y'all hear that? The yield of colonialism. A word that's very similar to, uh, what it is, Colon colonist, colonizers, words like that, like, yeah, like, what he's really saying is we managed to get away from the white man is what he's saying, we want to make sure everybody else can too, you, you hear that shit, right? 
from a guy from China. Not saying um, in regards to that. I just think it's ironic. You know, their biggest ally, Russia, is in war with the Ukraine right now. United States is sending money to Ukraine, which is, this is an entire proxy war. And now this BRICS Forum Summit of 2023 is here. They want to stop hegemony and bullying of countries. Who's bullying countries? Because I remember correctly, it does, isn't, China, isn't China like it's throwing threats at Taiwan again? Hmm. Everything we do is to deliver better lives to our people. But some country obsessed with maintaining its hegemony has gone out of its way to cripple the emerging markets and developing countries. Whoever is developing fast becomes its target of containment. Whoever is catching up becomes its target of obstruction. But this is futile. As I have said more than once, that blowing out others' lap will not bring light to oneself. Mm-hmm. Every country- Which country do you think they're talking about? Which country do you think they're talking about? You know, are we Babylon or are we Habakkuk? She has the right to development, and the people in every country have the freedom to pursue a happy life. With that in mind, I have proposed the Global Development Initiative with the goal of promoting development for all by the international community and boosting the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. With the support of many countries, solid gains have been made in pursuing this initiative with cooperation flourishing in various fields. China will work with all other countries to speed up cooperation under the Global Development Initiative, strengthen drivers of global development, promote the reform of the World Trade Organization, in a comprehensive and in-depth manner, meet common challenges together, and make life better for people across the world. We need to achieve universal security. Recent years have seen a turbulent world. Many countries and regions are plagued by wars and conflicts, and many people are displaced. Members of the international community share the pressing hope to eradicate the root cause of conflicts and wars, and find a fundamental way to realize enduring peace and security globally. Facts have shown that any attempt to keep enlarging a military alliance, expand one's own sphere of influence, and squeeze other countries' buffer of security can only create security predicament and insecurity for all countries. Only a commitment to a new vision of common, comprehensive, cooperative, and sustainable security can lead to universal security. Last year, I put forward a global security initiative, and it has gained support from over 100 countries and international organizations. China stands ready to jointly pursue this initiative with all others. We should have dialogue and oppose confrontation forge partnership but not alliance and pursue win-win outcome and oppose zero-sum game and work together to build a community of security. We need to stay committed to exchanges among civilizations and mutual learning. One flower alone cannot make a beautiful spring. Only blossoming of a rich variety of flowers can bring spring to the global garden. But you can't put a rock, several rocks, on top of some like Rebarb wires standing upright so that when we are flying over a plane, it looks like a cotton field. Human civilization is colorful by nature. It is precisely because of their differences in history, culture, and system that all countries need to interact with each other, draw on each other, and advance together. Deliberately creating division with the assertion of democracy versus authoritarianism and liberalism versus autocracy can only split the world and lead to clash of civilizations. I've put forward the Global Civilization Initiative, calling for promoting diversity of global civilizations, the common values of humanity, and people-to-people and cultural exchanges and cooperation. China welcomes all other countries to get involved in cooperation under this initiative. We should encourage different civilizations to bring out their best and flourish together. We should break barriers to exchanges and renew human civilization. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, as a nation Chinese philosopher observes, change is the nature of the universe. The collective rise of emerging markets and developing countries represented by BRICS is fundamentally 
changing the global landscape. Emerging markets and developing countries have contributed as high as 80% of global growth in the past 20 years, and their share in the global GDP has increased from 24% 40 years ago to more than 40%. Just as a line in the Chinese poem reads, "No mountains can stop the surging flow of a mighty river." Whatever resistance there may be, BRICS, a positive and stable force for good. Will continue to grow. So, what does that sound like to you, from someone from China? If you've ever actually taken the time to、uh, do what I've done and watch many videos,、um, some from Americans, some from people from the UK, even some from Africa, where they talk about the stuff that happens in China and how China runs things and how the people are da 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 and how. They're good and effective at making things, but those things are cheap and they break easily. Who's going to enforce that? Like the world comes globally together. How do you stop a bully? Well, you bully them back or just ignore them completely. But who is the bully here? I assume it's us. When you actually say, like, it all sounds good, don't it? It all sounds good when you don't know what it's like being an American, or even being in America. But then again, I guess it really doesn't matter.、Um, a global community forum—it's kind of like what they did with shell shock.、Um, they changed the term shell shock to post-traumatic stress disorder. It's a softer word.、Uh, George Carlin pointed that out. Rest in peace, you angry bastard! You. You will forge stronger BRICS strategic partnership. Expand the BRICS Plus model. Actively advance membership expansion, deepen solidarity and cooperation with other emerging markets and developing countries, promote global multipolarity and greater democracy in international relations, and help make the international order more just and equitable. The gathering between BRICS countries and more than 50 other countries in South Africa today. Is not an exercise of asking countries to take sides, nor an exercise of creating block confrontation. Rather, it is an endeavor to expand the architecture of peace and development. I am glad to note that over 20 countries are knocking on the door of BRICS. China hopes to see more joining the BRICS cooperation. You know why Africa was why especially South Africa was so keen on joining this shit. Cause the U.S. told them that like they're anti-LGBTQ plus whatever,、um, being against it that's wrong, and they need to open the doors and all of this, and they're being discriminatory. And the Africans were like, <laughs> "No, you don't play with my ass!" Like that's what the fuck they basically said. That's what they said because they don't know what the fuck it is. They just know it's gay. That's it. They they don't want gays. They don't like gays, and they and they made laws against gayness in Africa. China is also not for the gays. Russia is also not for the gays. There's a lot of countries that do not approve gay folk. Apparently, it was a mistake on America's part for trying to tell Africa. What to do in their own goddamn fucking house? And now we're all learning that、um, even Wuhan's talking about how、um, other countries are making deals to start trades off of the U.S. dollar, not using the dollar, but using their own rupees, burpees, yen, all that shit. Like countries are starting to want to use their own currency instead of trying to use the American dollar.、Um, This is crazy. Well, something woods. I can't remember what it was called. Something woods. Actually, let me see if I can look it up. Hajimani deal woods. Something wo- Bretton Woods. That's what it is. Bretton Woods. Bretton Woods. Um. Is how hegemony came to be. Created a collective international currency exchange regime that lasted from the mid 1940s to the early 1970s, which is not true. It's still on. The Bretton Woods system required a currency peg to the U.S. dollar, which would in turn pegged to the price of gold. 
Why did Bretton Woods fail? Inflationary monetary policies that was inappropriate for the key currency country of the system. Uh, what? The remaining part of the system, the adjustable peg, disappeared by March 1973. Um, they say this, but... Mm, Set of systems, rules, institutions, and procedures to regulate the international monetary system. These accords established the IMF and the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, which today is part of the World Bank Group. What system replaced Bretton Woods? The G10 approved an arrangement where six members of the European Committee tied their currencies together and jointly floated against the U.S. dollar, a decision that effectively signaled the development of Bretton Woods' fixed exchange rate system in favor of current uh, system of floating, whatever. What did the U.S. want from Bretton Woods? It was envisioned an international monetary system that would ensure exchange rate stability, prevent competitive devaluations, and promote economic Growth. What are the pros and cons? Provide stable exchange rates. The main disadvantage was that it would require coordination from policies among member countries. That was the biggest disadvantage. And we went off goal, what, 1971? And that was the most important thing. The U.S. dollar was actually backed by gold, which in all countries um, is actually something. But once the United States started, you know, taking themselves off gold, guess what? Uh, we're the ones who make the international money. So if we want to print money without it being backed on the dollar, we could do that. We could print our own bills. We could pay our own bills. Like, you know, have you know, did you remember when I was pointing out that a whole bunch of countries or a whole bunch of banks were putting themselves into a Fed now system and all of a sudden all of them are like defaulting on loans. They're losing their money and shit. All of a sudden they can't pay certain things back. Like withdrawals and shit are just a fucking peering all over the goddamn place, right? And then we got the BRICS Summit Forum of 2023 where they will stop hegemony and bullying of countries. Who do you think? Who do you, who do you think they're talking about? They already got 20 countries, right? BRICS Corporation Mechanism. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, China stays committed to an independent foreign policy of peace and the building of a community. By the way, you know how all those people were, um... Oh, there's my... You know how all those people were, um... Quote-unquote starved and their building sealed shut tight... Horrible things happening to a bunch of folk. Even the flooding in Beijing right now. Like, you know, it, 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 it speaks to my spirit. It speaks to my spirit. And I'm not sure if that was even enough souls taken off this planet to justify what might be happening right now. I'm pretty sure we're about to enter the Dark Ages again. You know. Welcome to the Kali Yuga or the end of the Kali Yuga. I don't know if this is the end of the Kali Yuga or the beginning of the Kali Yuga. It's one of the two. Someone's going to let me know. But uh, welcome back to the Dark Ages. But back in the Dark Ages, um, America didn't exist. Y'all know that, right? ...with a shared future for mankind. As a developing country and a member of the Global South, China breathes the same breath with other developing countries and pursues a shared future with them. China has resolutely upheld the common interests of developing countries and worked to increase the representation and voice of emerging markets and developing countries in global affairs. Hegemonism is not in China's DNA. Nor does China have any motivation to engage in major power competition. China's no, they're just going to go make friends with everybody else and convince everybody else. We're cool. We're friendly. They're bullies. Do you really want to hang out with a bully and then everyone's just going to stop associating with us? Because they, they don't like Americans anyway. We're loud, we're blunt, and we tell you too much. We're kind of di we're the dicks of the world, right? We're the dicks of the world. Um, but for for this message to come out about China, I, I'm sorry, but it's just like, mm, like you got your hand everywhere, but with your own people. I'm just saying, like, you know, um, 
when zoos have pandas, those are still pop property of the Republic of China. You don't own those pandas. If anything happens to the pandas, China will literally come and get them, and then they will fuck you up. They will fuck you up for fucking with their teddy bears. They literally will. No place owns panda bears. You understand me? Okay, I just want to make sure that's clear. It's firmly on the right side of history and believes that a just cause should be pursued for the common good. At present, we Chinese under the leadership of the Communist Party of China are advancing the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation on all fronts by pursuing Chinese modernization. Chinese modernization aims to achieve common prosperity, material and cultural ethical advancement, harmony between humanity and nature. But isn't it weird though? Sorry, I have to go into my oven. But isn't it weird though? Have you moved Like, I know I'm not the only one. Yeah, I hear you. I, I hear you. I need to add a cheese. Thank you very much. Like, isn't it weird? Isn't it? I, I'm just saying, I think it's weird. I think it's personally weird myself. As a sexy young white man, to uh, be witnessing this strange shit right here. Where all of a sudden there's just, just like and, and this has and this has been going on for a while. I just ain't been talking about it. There's been other things preoccupying my mind, right? But I just find it absolutely a, a, a well, honestly, encapsulating and intriguing to watch how we've all been so distracted with what's been going on that we ain't noticed how uh, people be creeping in the neighborhood. No, we'll sit here and talk all sorts of shit on each other all day, every day, trying to do something. And then here it is, this little thing right here, um, demonstrating that maybe we shouldn't have been, like, going at each other so much. Hmm? No. Maybe instead of telling people, um, you know, the ancestors said for us to shut the fuck up about something, we should have just gotten along and understood that maybe, just maybe, some of us had a point. Maybe instead of looking for ways to argue with motherfuckers, we should have been looking at who um, actually is a problem. You know, I, I, but, I, but you know, opportunists and shit. And a peaceful development for a huge population. Chinese modernization has created a new form of human advancement and presented a new future of modernization. We hope that other developing countries and draw on the outstanding achievements of human civilizations and find their own paths to modernization in keeping with their national conditions. Achieving high quality development is a top priority in China's goal of fully building itself into a modernized country. We are committed to applying a new development philosophy and creating a new development paradigm. In the past decade, China has contributed more than 30% of annual global growth. This year, the Chinese economy has maintained the momentum of recovery and growth. China enjoys several distinct advantages. A socialist market economy in systemic terms, a supersized market in terms of demand, a full-fledged industrial system in terms of supply, and abundant high-caliber labor force and entrepreneurs in terms of human resources. Wasn't it like not even a, two months ago where like there was a news report that the youth were running around in wheelchairs or some shit like that in protest of like the lack of jobs in China? Was that made up? I guess that was made up. Also, I like how he's talking about the modernization of China. So all them passport bros and like babes out there, right? Don't go to China because they got the modern men and the modern women over there too. But at least they know how to cook chicken. Like, I, like I'll give them that. Like, they learn how to cook chicken from us. Like, that, like that, that's just, uh, that's history right there. But I'm just letting you know, they know how to cook. But it's still going to be modern man, modern woman. Like, passport bros, that bitch is still going to make a plate for anybody but you. Learn to make your own plate, sir. Learn to make your own plate. Americans, develop a trade. He's probably ain't getting much else outside of here. You know, we were originally an isolationist country. We might be going back to them roots. The Chinese economy has strong resilience, tremendous potential, and great vitality. The fundamental sustaining China's long-term growth will remain unchanged. The giant ship of the Chinese economy will continue to cleave waves and sail ahead. China will remain an important opportunity for the world's development. Our door is wide open to anyone who wants to engage in cooperation with us. 
As a supersized economy, China will remain firm in advancing high standard opening up. We will continue to expand market access, cut a negative list for foreign investment, and further open the modern services sector. It will steadily. They will also make sure you don't leave the factory in case, like, a, a, a medical emergency happens. Because, they, like, you can't be leaving work because you might not come back. We need you to make them products, damn it. Improve the business environment, provide national treatment to foreign investment enterprises, foster a world-class market-oriented business environment governed by a sound legal framework, and build a globally-oriented network of high-standard free trade areas. We will continue to advance ecological conservation, accelerate the building of a beautiful China, actively and prudently move toward carbon peak and carbon neutrality, and pursue all-round green transition in economic and social development. Going How green? Are you serious? You have, like, what? I'm sorry, I'm not trying to talk shit about China this much, but China has more pollution in it than any other country, air-wise. Well, I don't know, because of them Canadian fires and shit, right? And Maui. And the volcanoes. I don't know, honestly, there's a lot of shit happening, and, and like, who knows, who knows? Forward, as it endeavors to achieve modernization for its more than 1.4 billion people, China will surely contribute even more to the global economy, and provide even more opportunities for the global business community. And they clap. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, a formidable mission is a magnificent and glorious mission. As long as we work in unity and strength and cooperation, we will not be intimidated by any risk or challenge on the way ahead, and we will surely steer the giant ship of human development to a brighter future. Thank you. Mm. Notice how Africans are re, I guess, respected here compared with G nothing meetings. I don't know. Someone's like, is it respect, or do they know that Africans like to fall for easy words? You will continue to be oppressed until you unify and manage your own affairs without foreign interference. Africans, ever since the missionaries introduced Jesus to you, you're always looking for a savior. There are no saviors, only people looking at... Well, not really. It's more like they have a common interest, which is uh, like they don't like gays. Peace and freedom. Must be a Chinese joke, I think. I wanted to read that, damn it. Like, let me see the news. Yeah, stop hedging. Dictatorship is founded on sand. Yes, listen to what they say, but watch what they do. This is all for power. Why is that why China's neighbors are turning to USA, including India, a member of the BRICS nation? Honestly, China needs to make some successions to make India and Brazil to vote to expand BRICS. Joke is on you, given that African countries have centuries-long relationships with China and were never bullied by China. Unlike the Western aggressors, colonizers, murderers of patriotic African presidents. Hmm. Which is a really good point. Africa also has issues with France, which is an ally to America as well. Just to point that out here. Not unless we the people start the da 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 da, but yeah. Hmm. Bricks expand, business grow. Bricks neutral, business poor. I'm not even sure what the fuck that means, but yeah. Yeah. You understand where this is coming from now? Like, there's a whole slew of shit that's happening, and people aren't paying attention because they're too worried about what's going on in the Americas. Oh, they're stopping our freedom. Oh, they're stopping us from learning about what's going on in the world, which I don't understand how. Nord VPN, blah, 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 like that shit, right? Um, there are ways around um, finding news. It's really not that hard. Unless you don't know how to look for it. Um, what I'm trying to say is, uh, this is the start of the new Dark Ages, is what I'm saying. Dark, and let's be clear.
You better get ready. I have no idea who Yachty Goss is. You better get ready. You better be prepared. You better get ready. It's all going in the air. But the dude did have a point. China's never, ever been disrespectful to Africans. I've heard Americans on the other hand. That's a completely different story. It's a completely different story. Um, you know, because unfortunately we were stripped of our heritage. A lot of us are starting to learn it back again. But uh, a lot of us were stripped of it. Don't even know which tribes were taken. Well, there, there's a night. Well, we came from the 12 tribes from the uh, which side of Africa, right? Nowhere near fucking Egypt. I want to point out. Nowhere near Egypt. Okay? I just I just want to point that out there. Um, because some people, you know, need to understand that. Uh, but yeah, um, ours are stripped. So they were, I don't think they really know how to deal with us. They just know we're mouthy as fuck. My, but I guarantee you, that hearts and minds shit is going to take on a whole new meeting. Mm-hmm. You betcha.